Usama Rameses III was the second pharaoh of the 20th dynasty and is considered to be the last great New Kingdom king to wield any substantial authority over Egypt. His long reign saw the decline of Egyptian power, linked to a series of invasions and economic problems. Rameses III was the son of Sidnacht and Queen Tiamerenes. He was probably murdered by an assassin in a conspiracy led by one of his secondary wives, Tai, and her son Pentorit. Name, Rameses II main names transliterate as WSMEOT Rear Euro MLY Permil MN Remis Zar Euro Alpha Cube DO Center Permil WNW. They are normally realized as Usumite Emrium and Rames Hekhayunu, meaning the mat of Ra is strong, beloved of Amun, born of Ra, ruler of Heliopolis. Ascension, Rameses III is believed to have reigned from March 1186 to April 1155 BC. This is based on his known accession date of I Shemu Day 26 and his death on year 32 3 Shemu Day 15, for a reign of 31 years, 1 month and 19 days. Alternate dates for his reign are 1187 to 1156 BC. In a description of his coronation from Midian at Habu, Four doves were said to be dispatched to the four corners of the horizon to confirm that the living Horus, Ramses III, is in possession of his throne, that the order of Mard prevails in the cosmos and society. Tenure of Constant War During his long tenure in the midst of the surrounding political chaos of the Greek Dark Ages, Egypt was beset by foreign invaders and experienced the beginnings of increasing economic difficulties and internal strife which would eventually lead to the collapse of the 20th dynasty. In year five of his reign, the sea peoples, including Peliset, Denian, Shardana, Mshfosh of the Sea, and Jekka, invaded Egypt by land and sea. Rameses III defeated them in two great land and sea battles. Although the Egyptians had a reputation as poor seamen they fought tenaciously. Rameses lined the shores with ranks of archers who kept up a continuous volley of arrows into the enemy ships when they attempted to land on the banks of the Nile. Then the Egyptian navy attacked using grappling hooks to haul in the enemy ships. In the brutal hand-to-hand -hand fighting which ensued, the sea people were utterly defeated. The Harris Papyrus states, As for those who reached my frontier, their sea does not, their heart and their soul are finished forever and ever. As for those who came forward together on the seas, the full flame was in front of them at the Nile mouths, while a stockade of lances surrounded them on the shore prostrated on the beach, slain, and made into heaps from head to tail. Rameses III claims that he incorporated the Sea Peoples as subject peoples and settled them in southern Canaan, although there is no clear evidence to this effect. The pharaoh, unable to prevent their gradual arrival in Canaan, may have claimed that it was his idea to let them reside in this territory. Their presence in Canaan may have contributed to the formation of new states in this region such as Philistia after the collapse of the Egyptian Empire in Asia. Rameses III was also compelled to fight invading Libyan tribesmen in two major campaigns in Egypt's western delta in his year 6 and year 11 respectively. Economic turmoil, the heavy cost of these battles slowly exhausted Egypt's treasury and contributed to the gradual decline of the Egyptian Empire in Asia. The severity of these difficulties is stressed by the fact that the first known labor strike in recorded history occurred during year 29 of Rameses III's reign, when the food rations for the Egypt's favored and elite royal tomb builders and artisans in the village of Set Martarimenti were set, could not be provisioned. Something in the air prevented much sunlight from reaching the ground and also arrested global tree growth for almost two full decades until 1140 BC. The result in Egypt was a substantial increase in grain prices under the later reigns of Rameses Viaduct Euro 7, whereas the prices for fowl and slaves remained constant. Thus the cooldown affected Rameses III's final years and impaired his ability to provide a constant supply of grain rations to the workmen of the Dur el Medina community. These difficult realities are completely ignored in Rameses' official monuments, many of which seek to emulate those of his famous predecessor. Rameses II, and which present an image of continuity and stability. He built important additions to the temples at Luxor and Karnak, and his funerary temple and administrative complex at Medayanet Habu is amongst the largest and best preserved in Egypt. However, 
The uncertainty of Ramesses' times is apparent from the massive fortifications which were built to enclose the latter. No temple in the heart of Egypt prior to Ramesses' reign had ever needed to be protected in such a manner. Conspiracy and Death Thanks to the discovery of papyrus trial transcripts, it is now known that there was a plot against his life as a result of a royal harem conspiracy during a celebration at Midian at Habu. The conspiracy was instigated by Tai, one of his three known wives, over whose son would inherit the throne. Tai's son, Rameses Amon Hercopsh, was the eldest and the successor chosen by Rameses III in preference to Tai's son Pentorit. The trial documents show that many individuals were implicated in the plot. Chief among them were Queen Tai and her son Pentorit, Rameses' chief of the chamber, P. Bikarman, seven royal butlers, two treasury overseers, two army standard bearers, two royal scribes and a herald. There is little doubt that all of the main conspirators were executed, some of the condemned were given the option of committing suicide rather than being put to death. According to the surviving trials transcripts, three separate trials were started in total while 38 people were sentenced to death. The tombs of Tai and her son Pentorit were robbed and their names erased to prevent them from enjoying an afterlife. The Egyptians did such a thorough job of this that the only references to them are the trial documents and what remains of their tombs. Some of the accused harem women tried to seduce the members of the judiciary who tried them but were caught in the act. Judges who were involved were severely punished. It is not certain whether the assassination plot succeeded since Rameses IV, the king's designated successor, assumed the throne upon his death rather than Pentorit who was intended to be the main beneficiary of the palace conspiracy. Moreover, Rameses III died in his thirty-second year before the summaries of the sentences were composed, but the same year that the trial documents record the trial and execution of the conspirators. Although it was long believed that Rameses III's body showed no obvious wounds, a recent examination of the mummy by a German forensic team, televised in the documentary Rameses, Mummy King Mystery on the Science Channel in 2011, showed excessive bandages around the neck. A subsequent CT scan that was done in Egypt by Ashraf Selim and Zaha Salim, professors of radiology in Cairo University, revealed that beneath the bandages was a deep knife wound across the throat deep enough to reach the vertebrae. According to the documentary narrator, it was a wound no one could have survived. The December 2012 issue of the British Medical Journal quotes the conclusion of the study of the team of researchers, led by Dr. Zai Hawass, the former head of the Egyptian Supreme Council of Antiquity, and his Egyptian team, as well as Dr. Albert Zink from the Institute for Mummies and the Iceman of the European Academy of Bolzano Bozen in Italy which stated that conspirators murdered Pharaoh Rameses III by cutting his throat. Zink observes in an interview that, the cut, to Rameses III's throat is very deep and quite large, it really goes down almost down to the bone, it must have been a lethal injury. Before this discovery it had been speculated that Rameses III had been killed by means that would not have left a mark on the body. Among the conspirators were practitioners of magic who might well have used poison. Some had put forth the hypothesis that a snake bite from a viper was the cause of the king's death. His mummy includes an amulet to protect Rameses III in the afterlife from snakes. The servant in charge of his food and drink were also among the listed conspirators, but there were also other conspirators who were called the Snake and the Lord of Snakes. In one respect the conspirators certainly failed. The crown passed to the king's designated successor. Rameses IV. Rameses III may have been doubtful as to the latter's chances of succeeding him, given that, in the great Harris Papyrus, he implored Amun to ensure his son's rights. Legacy, the great Harris Papyrus or Papyrus Harris I, which was commissioned by his son and chosen successor Rameses IV, chronicles this king's vast donations of land, gold statues and monumental construction to Egypt's various temples at Pyramus, Heliopolis, Memphis, Athribis, Hermopolis, This, Abydos, Coptos, El Cab and other cities in Nubia and Syria. It also records that the king dispatched a trading expedition to the land of Punt and quarried the copper mines of Timna in southern Canaan. Papyrus Harisai records some of Rameses' three activities. I sent my emissaries to the land of Attica, yea, 
Timna to the great copper mines which are there. Their ships carried them along and others went overland on their donkeys. It had not been heard of since the king. Their mines were found and yielded copper which was loaded by tens of thousands into their ships, they being sent in their cay to Egypt, and arriving safely. More notably, Rameses began the reconstruction of the Temple of Khonsu at Karnak from the foundations of an earlier temple of Amenhotep III and completed the Temple of Medayan at Habu around his year 12. He decorated the walls of his Medayan at Habu temple with scenes of his naval and land battles against the Sea Peoples. This monument stands today as one of the best preserved temples of the New Kingdom. The mummy of Rameses III was discovered by antiquarians in 1886 and is regarded as the prototypical Egyptian mummy in numerous Hollywood movies. His tomb is one of the largest in the Valley of the Kings. Chronological dispute, there is uncertainty regarding the exact dates of the reign of Rameses III. This uncertainty affects the dating of the Late Bronze Iron Age transition in the Levant. This transition is defined by the appearance of Mycenae and LHIIC. 1B pottery in the coastal plain of Palestine, generally assumed to correspond to the settlement of sea people there at the eighth year of Rameses III. Radiocarbon dates and other external evidence permit this transition to be as late as 1100 BCE, compared to the conventional dating of C1179 BCE. Some scientists have tried to establish a chronological point for this pharaoh's reign at 1159 BC based on a 1999 dating of the Hekla III eruption of the Hekla volcano in Iceland. Since contemporary records show that the king experienced difficulties provisioning his workmen at Dur el Medina with supplies in his 29th year, this dating of Hekla III might connect his 28th or 29th regnal year to c. 1159 BC. A minor discrepancy of one year is possible since Egypt's granaries could have had reserves to cope with at least a single bad year of crop harvests following the onset of the disaster. This implies that the king's reign would have ended just three to four years later around 1156 or 1155 BC. Arrival date of 2900 BP has since been proposed by scientists based on a re-examination of the volcanic layer. Given that no Egyptologist dates Rameses III's reign to as late as 1000 BC, this would mean that the Hekla III eruption presumably occurred well after Rameses III's reign. A 2002 study, using high-precision radiocarbon dating of a peat deposit containing ash layers, put this eruption in the range 1087-1006 BC. Ancient Genetics, according to a genetics study in December 2012. Rameses III belonged to Y-DNA haplogroup E1B1A. The E-Y-DNA haplogroups predominate in most sub-Saharan Africans. References Further reading, Eric H. Klein and David O'Connor, eds. Rameses III, The Life and Times of Egypt's Last Hero 560 pages. Essays by Scholars. External links, Timna, Valley of the Ancient Copper Mines.